Hello, my name is Paul and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the forms feature within Asana and how you might use it in your business. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you want to learn more about how to optimize Asana for your business or get help with team training, check out the details in, de in the description to learn more about my Asana consulting services. Okay, so let's talk about forms then in Asana. What is the purpose of this feature, first of all? So inside of a project here, um, along the tabs, along the top, we have this forms option. This is where the forms live. And what this allows me to do is I can create a form for submitting information into Asana. Now, when I submit my form, it's basically going to create a task with the information from that form provided. So why would you need a feature like this? Well, really it's about putting a better process in place when you are creating tasks and submitting and managing work into a tool like Asana. Obviously how you use this tool is gonna to depend a little bit on the project. But some examples of how forms, how I've seen my clients use things like forms are really for things like maybe support tickets. Uh, I can create a form, I can copy the link and I can share this form with clients and I could have them submit uh, a support ticket into my account that's going to assign a task to me. Maybe if you have like a designer who needs to manage design requests for different branding and assets and things that need to be designed, uh, you could submit, you could have a form for collecting information about the design work that's needed. Uh, maybe you do some bug tracking. You have a developer who does bug tracking and, and report and, and managing uh, issues. You could have a form for collecting information about what is the bug, what page on the website did you see it on, uh, and collecting information about that bug. Or how about uh, client onboarding? Actually, that's a popular one. I've seen clients create forms for their clients where they say, you know, what's your name? What's the goal of this project? Give us your information. And then it's a really easy way to collect information to have stored into Asana. So in summary, forms are just a really easy way to collect information to have that stored into Asana. It's also good for uh, your own internal use if you find that people create tasks that are a little bit vague, because with the form, like you can see here, I can ask specific questions to make sure I'm collecting all of the information that I need to do my work. So let's have a look at this example. I'm here in this admin and accounting project. Um, I, I can give my form a cover image and I can kind of brand it a little bit if I choose to. Um, I've given it a name and a bit of a description of how this form should be used. Now every form starts with a name and an email address. These are two required fields. We can't remove those but um, you know the person filling out the form will get a, an email response when when they fill this in. And basically then I can just design the questions for my form. And on the right hand side, I've got all the different field types that I can insert. So I could have a, a single line text. I could drag that in here and I could say, you know, invoice um, company. And I could have a description. What, uh, who is the company being invoiced? And I could make that a required field. Uh, and so we've got various field types we can use, you know, text fields, numerical fields, drop down menus is a useful one, multi select fields, date fields, and even attachment fields as well. And with some of your fields, you can actually collect, connect them to the uh, custom fields in your project. So if you actually have a look in my main project, I have this field on the right hand side, uh, invoice amount. And so if I go back to my form, what you'll see down here at the very bottom, this invoice amount question that I've created, I've actually connected it to the invoice amount field in my project. So when a value is inserted into this uh, field, it's actually going to populate this invoice amount field in my task in my main project. So that's something you can do uh, is yeah, map your responses to the different field types. A relatively new feature to the forms is the ability to add uh, kind of paths. So if we look here, uh, I have this drop down menu and I've got two, uh, I've got this question here, what is the invoice type? And I've got invoice to be paid or invoice due. Now, based on the type, I can um, send people down a, a path or what Asana calls a branch. So if it's an invoice to be paid, I can say, when is the invoice due? Or if it's an invoice that's due, I can say, when is payment expected? And uh, you can see with each of these, I've mapped them to the due date field for my task. And so this is kind of where the form allows you to create sort of conditional logic where if they respond with this, ask this set of questions. And uh, yeah, I've basically built out the rest of my form here. Now, once, it's, once I've built out my questions, it's worth looking at the settings as well. When, I, um, when the form gets filled in, 
I can set how do I want my um, task to be named. And I can actually select multiple fields here. So I can say, uh, maybe I want to do invoice company, and then uh, maybe the invoice number. I can also in these settings choose who do I want the newly created task to be assigned to. So I'm just assigning it to myself in this case. And then I've chosen here to copy all the response data into my task description. And so when I'm ready to send this, uh, I can either, I can just view the form myself or I can copy this link and send that to people, even people external who aren't even in my Asana account, like a client or external party. And so if I fill this in now, let's just say Paul Miners, uh, Paul at, and let's just say the company is Miner Workshop. I'll just put in a description here. This is gonna be an invoice to be paid. And so it's gonna bring up my invoice due date question. This is due, let's say, next Friday. Invoice number is one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can attach a file in here. Uh, let's just attach this uh, picture of me. And then the invoice amount, let's say, is $1,000. And so there we go. I can submit that. That's going to now generate a new task for me in the project. And so here we go. I can see in the top of my project now, here is all the information that was collected through that form and the invoice amount, because that's mapped to a field, has been filled in. And so that's a pretty simple look at uh, using and creating a form. What you can do if you're ready, if you want to really extend what forms can do, you can then connect um, your forms to some rules. So if we go to the customize options in Asana, you can see I've actually created some rules here. So you could create a custom rule where maybe when the task is assigned to a certain person, like in this case me, I could have this moved to a certain section. Maybe I want to move it, uh, here we go, move to the accounts receivable section. And so now not only is it gonna create a new task for me, but when I submit that task, because it's assigned to me, it would actually move it down to this accounts receivable section. So that's one of the ways that you can, uh, yeah, kind of really extend what this feature can do. Now, a couple of the limitations with this feature as of right now, as of the date of recording, you can only have one form per project. So here I am in the admin and accounting project. This is my form for this specific project. If I want to have a different form that submits information into this project, I can't do that at the moment. I can only have one form. If you want to have multiple forms submit data into a project, that's where maybe you need to use a custom integration, something like JotForm or Google Forms, and connect it to Asana using something like Zapier. Uh, this is actually something I show in my Master Asana online course. And another limitation as well is that often what I see clients wanting to do is with the new task that gets created, like this one here, I've obviously got all this information, which is great, but maybe I actually want to have a list of subtasks here, you know, a sort of a, a, a checklist, if you like, you know, these are some things that I need to do for this newly created task. Again, with the rules that are built into Asana, as of right now, we don't have that capability. But again, this is something that I show in my Master Asana course, is how you can use tools like Zapier to automate the creation of subtasks and things on your main tasks. So that's a bit of a look at the forms feature of Asana. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.